Hello, hello. If you are here, say hi. And let me know where you are joining in from. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi, Nelly. Hi, Diane. Hello, hello. I hope you guys have got a um, nice cup of tea or something here. Kota Kinabalu, Michigan. Wow. So nice to see you all. All right, I'm just going to wait a couple more, um, couple more minutes um, just to let everyone get a chance to jump in. Hi from France. Hello, hello. Hi, Smurfy. <laughs> all right, so today, or rather tonight, I was going to be talking about the three R's that we need to that we need to have i guess to keep in mind when we are choosing um good picture books for our children i'm going to tell you the three hours in a minute but basically these three hours these three hours are not the only thing that i look for when i'm choosing a picture book but just to you know let us have um i guess um a starting a starting place right somewhere that we can look at to think of even choosing books because there are just honestly so many factors that we need to consider you know things like illustrations you know things like um, um, language and all that kind of thing, right? But there are so many things to look out for and can be a little bit overwhelming to choose books, right? Especially if, you know, you're just going to the library, for instance, and just checking out the books on offer and you're just like, oh my goodness, what do I pick for my children, right? Now, before I say anything else, right, I want to say that even, even if you, you don't know where to start, right? reading a book any book is better than not reading at all all right so if you're already doing that already that is amazing and that is already a step in the right direction but i personally believe there is good books and then there is even better books right and so tonight i wanted to talk to you guys about what makes um, what i personally consider like better books and why i would choose certain books rather than others if i were to you know curate um a collection of books for my children for instance in our home like these are the things that i will be looking out for first and foremost all right um hello hello hi everyone so nice to see um some familiar faces here um hi ethel from singapore hi hm7 from uk wow it's just everyone from all over hello hello all right cool so i might just get going um oh no i just pressed something and now i can't see the comments uh all right so i might just get going and then every now and then um i'm just gonna pop back into the comments to see if you guys have got any questions for me all right and so I've got a couple of books here that I will um, show you guys later as well as to like why I chose these books and um, just depending on how time goes I might be able to read like um, a couple of pages from each of them or maybe like I don't know I'll, I'll just let you guys vote later and you guys can tell me all right now first and foremost right when we are choosing books right for the purpose of helping our children to develop like early literacy skills right you know when you guys think of uh, think of early literacy skills most people would only just think of things like reading and writing am i right but the fact with um early literacy there are actually four different things that we need to consider that is not just reading and writing and the four is reading writing listening as well as speaking and the thing is listening and speaking are actually the basic foundation they are the building blocks before we can even help our children to read and write right so before we can even help our children read and write they need to get their basics they need to get their foundation in place and that is they need to be able to you know have those conversations with us right they need to have um good vocabulary for instance and that comes with listening their ability to listen and their ability to speak right so good vocabulary and when they are listening what are they listening out for they are listening to um phonological awareness right their ability to distinguish between sounds all right and so how can we um 
help our children to distinguish between sounds, to help our children to develop a vocabulary so that later on we are setting the path for them to be able to read and write, right? It's these three R's that I'm going to be talking about, all right? So number one, the first R is rhyming, all right? And so why are so many popular books, right? Classic books, why are they mostly... Um, said at their, their um, great books, right? It's because they are rhyming, right? And the beauty of rhyming um, in books, right, is that it allows children to actually distinguish between um, sounds, between words, right? And secondly, when, when books and stories are rhyming, it helps children to actually predict what um, a word is coming up next, right? So for instance, um, it might be a brand new book to them, right? And you're reading, and actually even, it, it's so obvious for us as adults, right? Sometimes when you're reading a book, a, a page for instance, right? And you know, sometimes with picture books, they might they might hide the, the rhyming word in the next page, right? And so you don't have the word until you actually flip the page. But because you know it's a rhyming book, right? Sometimes even before you've actually flipped the page, right? You can actually predict, right? I'm sure you, you would know that sometimes when you come to the end, of the sentence and you're, you know like oh you know that next word is most definitely there or here or something like that right because it rhymes right and because because you know that it's going to rhyme you can predict that there's only a few words that could possibly fit on the last page right the next page and then when you turn the page right you're so excited because you are right right and that goes with kids as well. Like when words are rhyming, especially with the older kids, right? Like four, five, even older as well. When they are, are introduced to rhyming words, for instance, right? They are able to predict um, the words that are coming. It helps them to get en involved in the process of reading, to interact with you in the process of reading, right? Helps them to engage. And that helps with their motivation to read as well. All right? Because they are, they are enjoying the process. The process is fun, right? And that builds engagement. All right, and also with regards to rhyming, um, it helps. It helps if you always just you know pause at the. I'll, I'll demonstrate later. But usually when I read books, right, that are rhyming with my kids, what happens is I will read to the part where it's just about to to rhyme, and I will pause to let my children fill in the blanks. All right. And this works wonderfully to encourage them to remember as well, like help them to remember and read the, the words over and over and over again, right? And that brings me to my next point, which is R, repetition, right? A lot of books that we are familiar with and they are considered as great books, right? They are great because they are constantly repetitive as well. And this goes really, really well with the rhyming, right? And the reason why it goes so well with rhyming, right? And for children to actually get the, the, the hang of reading along with you is because children learn through repetition. The more they hear... Um, a phrase, for instance, the more they hear something going over and over again. For instance, you know, we're going on a bear hunt, right? Some of you might be familiar with the book, we're going on a bear hunt, we're going on a bear hunt, right? I'm not afraid. What a beautiful day, right? And that repeats every single page, right? And the thing is, when it's constantly repetitive, right? Children get the hang of books really quickly. And then by the end of like a couple of times of reading, like maybe two or three times, for instance, right? What happens is they remember the story. Now, at that point, they might not be reading per se. They might not be reading, but they are actually they are actually retelling the story word for word, right? Like even now, my four-year-old, she and even my three-year-old, they are not able to read in terms of like, they cannot like, you know, decode words. They cannot just see like, um, um, R-E-A-D, they, and they don't know that it's read. But the thing is, if I have read it to them enough times, and if the book is repetitive in nature, and if the book is rhyming in nature, they, it's so easy for them to memorize the whole book, right? I have so many videos of examples of my children, right, memorizing entire books, right? Short books, but even then, they are memorizing entire books, even as young as like... Um, Less, not even two years old, right? Not even two, my, my, my children will be memorizing books, right? From start to end, right? And it's amazing because like people will just think, you know, when I film them, they're like, wow, your children are just reading, they're amazing. But they are not like, reading in the, in the way that reading is meant to be, but they're actually memorizing them. And that is so good because why? 
Children need to be able to retell stories before they can even write stories later. They need to know how language goes. They need to know how structures of books go, how, that, how stories have a beginning, there's a middle with a conflict, and then there's a resolution at the end, right? All these come with repetition, and the more they are exposed to repetition, the more they're exposed to rhyme, that's when they actually get familiarized with um, how language works, right? And that's how they eventually become able to actually read and write as well. All right, and when it comes to rhyming as well, right? Sometimes when they are they are rhyming, for instance, right? It sometimes it it if you swap a word out, for instance, like cat, you know, bat, rat, and if you swap out a word, for instance, and you put a um a silly word that doesn't rhyme, the beauty of rhyme is children will be able to tell you that no, mummy, that's silly. It's not the right word, right? Because they can distinguish the difference between between the sounds, right? And when you swap out words, for instance, like um, the, the very last live I did, right? I was reading um, Chica Chica Boom Boom and I was explaining to everyone how, um, there's a video of this in my feed if you're interested, but I was explaining to everyone about how um, my husband, when he, because um, there is a line in Chica Chica Boom Boom that goes, um, aunts, I think that does um, mamas and papas and uncles and aunts, A-U-N-T-S, right? And that's how we pronounce um, aunts, A-U-N-T-S, we pronounce aunts. But then the, the line that rhymes with that word is pants. They, they come and help their children to dust their pants, right? And and aunts don't rhyme with pants, right? But that's how we pronounce it. But then later, a lot of you have actually corrected me that in, I think, Canada or I think even in America as well, you guys pronounce the word aunts as ants. And so it rhymes, you see? But because for us, it doesn't rhyme, right? And so when we are being silly and then we say, all right, uncles and aunts, um, uncles and aunts help the hug their little dears and dust their, instead of saying pants, we say pants to make it rhyme and our children just laugh they have uh, so much fun they enjoy it. they you know when you have laughter in the whole process you have fun in the whole process right rhyming and then when it doesn't when you swap out a word that is not the right word just to make it rhyme or when you swap out a word to make it not rhyme for instance right children can differentiate it children can hear the difference and they can understand that there is a difference in phonological um that um, sounding right it builds their phonological awareness and it helps them to actually later learn how to decode as well because they can see that all right that is not right because that is not the sound of that letter that's not how it's meant to be all right so um let me just pause there for a while to see if you guys um have got any questions let me know anytime if you need me to clarify something and just pop your questions um in there all right um hi nikki Cool, cool, cool. So, um, just to recap, let me let let me um see in the comments if you can remember what's the first R that I've talked about. Just for people who have joined us a little bit later, perhaps. Can anyone put in the comments what's the first R? I'm just gonna be waiting for you guys to um engage with me and to um put it in there in the comments what's the very first hour i talked about when we are looking for um for what makes a good book and choosing books awesome julian karen rhyme that is so good rhyme right so that is so important rhyming all right and then what's the second one rhyme Because rhyming helps our children to be able to join in the process because they can predict. They can, um, yeah, repetition. Awesome, awesome. I love that you guys are paying attention. All right. Now, the very last one. Does anyone want to guess? So we've got rhyme. We've got repetition. And the third one is actually rhythm. You're like, what? Why do you need rhythm in books? Now, remember, when I was reading the Chica Chica Boom Boom, I actually have the book right here. And um, I'm actually using the book to prop my phone now, but I'm just going to swap it out so that I can hold the book up. Sorry, I should have been a bit more prepared than I would use the book. Uh, primitive, primitive way here, but... You know, when I was explaining to you guys um, in my last life, and I was reading um, Chica Chica Boom Boom, 
ah, oh, the book is upside down, um, mirror image. But basically, with rhythm, right, it's again, it's all part of the rhyming and repetition as well. It helps children to join in and they can actually expect um, at which part there is a, you know, there's a pause, which part there is um, a more syllables, for instance, right? For instance, just, just a quick read. Um, I'm not going to read the whole book because I've already done that the other time. But just for those of you who might not be familiar with this book, right? Like Chica Chica Boom Boom. A took B and B took C, right? And and when I read it, I don't just read A took B and B took C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. We said D to E, F, G. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut trees. Can you see the rhyming? But the thing is, it's not just rhyming, but there's rhythm in it as well, right? And the thing is, when I read the book with rhythm, for instance, so I'll go like A took B and B took C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. We said D to E, F, G. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. So I'm just going to stop there, right? But basically, when I read a book like that with rhythm, right, and then my children will sometimes, you know, clap along as well, and they'll go like A to B and B to C, right? And the, the thing that rhythm does, right, it, it helps children, right, to actually learn math as well. Like, you will be surprised, right? Rhythm, when you read books with rhythm, right, it actually helps them with math, right? Because they actually realize that, you know, they are following in time with beat, right? The beat of the of the book, right? And they realize that, you know, at some points, right, there is one syllable because um, of how it, it um, how the, the, the rhythm of the story goes, right? They realize that at this point, right, it can only be a word that has one syllable. At this point, for instance, it, it needs a word with two syllables, for instance, like A to B and B to C. I'll beat you at the top of the coconut tree, right? So at the coconut tree. And so you can see how with that, right, it, it allows children to actually be in time to the to the to the story. And then it also helps them, like I said, with math because they actually understand as they clap, right, they understand one-to-one correspondence. I've talked about one-to-one -one correspondence a couple of times before, right? And what one to one correspondence does, right, is they allow children to actually assign one object one word, one whatever it is, just one item to a particular beat, a particular word. And it, is, it, is, it helps with the math skills as well, right? And so even though today I'm just talking about literacy development, right? But, you know, and that's why it's so important to curate the kind of environment that will be so effective to actually just teach our children just in everyday life, right? Like just, I don't have to specifically teach my children anything, but just in the way I curate my books, just in the way I curate the environment for my kids, right? Just by choosing books, for instance, that are, you know, have rhyme in it, have um, repetition, have... Um, have, um, what's the last one, have um, rhythm in it, right? I'm actually exposing my children to all the, the amazing things already, like um, vocabulary. Like another thing I forgot to mention about rhyming is the fact is because books need to rhyme, right? When, as it's not, not that they need to rhyme, but for books that are, are intended to rhyme, for instance, right? Authors will, will um, intentionally choose words that, that are not um, necessary, um, the words that they might choose if it's not a rhyming book, for instance, right? And that exposes children to a wider range um, of vocabulary and that really helps with their literacy, literacy skills. And then like I said, with rhythm as well, it helps with their math skills as well, right? And can you imagine just by reading that you, their, your children are learning so many different things, all right? And so rhyming, repetition, and the last one, rhythm, all right? And so, yeah, that's just my little... Um, teaching I guess tonight but tonight my main focus is really I wanted to I guess read a couple of books to you guys because I wanted to show you guys how rhythm repetition and rhyming actually comes together in effect right when we actually use it to um, the best um, advantage for our children all right so today I've just curated a couple of books here I'm just going to read um maybe one first and then we'll see how time goes and then you can let me know if you want me to continue all right I'm happy to read them all but so anyway, um, this book here is called Dig Dig Digging. Um, it's a it's um a book right that children just all love right because of the rhythm, rhyme, and repetition in it. When I was a kindergarten teacher, 
I read this book all the time. Like, can you see? Like, it's just so in horrible condition, so dog eared out. Actually, all my books, right, have been taped and taped and taped back together like several times, right? But the thing is, with regards to this book, right, another thing I didn't mention, right, is about how, you know, books have the, have the ability to actually explore concepts with our children as well, right? And we've, if you've got a child who loves, um, you know, transport, um, transportation vehicles and things like that, for instance, like, um, I think this usually would be one of those boys, right? This would be an amazing book. Now, I only have girls, but, and, and I don't have, I don't have um, children who like are really really into vehicles but even then this is one of my girls favorite like favorite books and even um like as as a uh, less than a two-year-old my children were like reading this book from memory because of the rhyme because of the repetition and because of how i actually made it into a song even and that's the beauty of a lot of these rhythmic repetitive books as well like you can actually just create songs out of books right it doesn't have to um, be like perfect, you know, you don't have to have a good singing voice and things like that, right? But the fact is when you are when there's a cadence to the to the story when there is a rhythm a, um, um, a Definable rhythm and there's an um, a rhythm that is very clear to follow along, right? You can actually put like music and tunes right familiar tunes in there, right? And it will fit exactly right and that's how that the whole one-to-one -one correspondent comes along as well because it actually fits in very nicely with tunes and things like that right and so that's why i wanted to choose this book here because usually with books like that right people don't think to just add it into a music for instance right but you might be quite familiar with the tune i am so i'm just gonna go you know um my last live i did i did it on facebook and um, the mirror image actually worked. So I have no idea why it doesn't work on Instagram. And so, um, yeah, I'm sorry in advance that it is not um, in the right way around. But Instagram. All right, cool. So, so every single page is, on, is, is teaching children about each different um, transportational vehicles, right? And so... Yeah, I'm just going to go, all right? And Instagram is vertical as well, so you can't really see the, the whole picture book, but I'm just going to try my best, and I might sit a little bit further. You can't see the words, but it's all right. Okay, so this book is, this page is on diggers, all right? So it goes, I'm just going to read the page once, and then I'm going to sing, all right? Because I wanted to show you guys as well the difference when you are just reading a book, for instance, and then when you add the music to it. All right, so this page it goes, Diggers are good at dig, dig, digging, scooping up the earth and lifting and tipping. Can you hear the rhyming? They make huge holes with their dig, dig, digging. They can work all day, all right? So, yeah, it doesn't sound like much, but then later on you'll get it, right? And so they can work all day. This line repeats itself throughout the entire book. Every single page of the book, it goes, um, they can work all day, right? And so it helps my children to just get involved in the reading process as well. Because even though they cannot read, because of how repetitive it is, they actually remember the words, right? And they always join in. All right, ready? Here goes. Diggers are good at dig, dig, digging, scooping up the earth and lifting and tipping. They make huge holes with the dig, dig, digging. They can work all day. Fire engines. Fire engines are good at race, race, racing. Nina, Nina, bright lights flashing. Horses at the ready for swoosh, swoosh, swooshing. They can work all day. Tractors. Tractors are good at pull, pull, pulling. Plowing up the field with a squelch, squelch, squelching. Round go the wheels. See the mud flying, they can work all day. Can you hear that? They can work all day. and goes ra repeat, re repetitively over and over again. And because you are singing, right, the, your children actually knows that the melody, the tune. And so it helps them. They, they just remember the book like that. All right. Rubbish trucks. Rubbish trucks are good at gobble, gobble, gobbling. Crunchy, messy rubbish bags, squeezing and squashing. Busy, busy rubbish eaters always gobbling. They can work all day. Cranes are good at lift, lift, lifting. Up go the bricks to the top of the building. Down comes the pipes very slowly spinning. They can work all day. 
transporters. Transporters are good at car transporting. Rams down, rams up, shiny cars loading. All about off they go. Room, room, rooming. They can work all day. Let's just go over and over and over again with all the different uh, vehicles, right? And it's so amazing because because of this book, right? Every time we're driving on the car, my children are just excitedly looking out for car transporters. Which is like, ah, a two-year-old looking for car transporters. Dump trucks! Dump trucks are good at dump, dump, dumping. Carrying heavy loads and tip, tip, tipping. Out for the rocks. Crash! Rumbling and tumbling, they can work all day. So at this point, right, because of the word crash, and it's got exclamation mark, right, and so when I'm singing and reading, right, I will suddenly do a very dramatic, like, crash, right? And then I'll tell my, my children, look, mommy's saying it so loudly because here, there is, they, they have made the word so much bigger, they've got an exclamation mark, you know, and things like that. So we talk about the book, we talk about the features of the book as well, and it helps my children go like, yeah, so now my children actually know like exclamation mark and things like that. So when we're reading books and they see exclamation mark, they will like shout, because to them exclamation is, you means that you have to exclaim, right? And all these are authentic learning, guys. Just learning through reading, like what are punctu punctuation marks for? Right? Rescue helicopters. Helicopters are good at whir, whir, whirring, hovering and zooming, rotor blades whizzing, down comes the rope. Look, someone is rescuing, they can work all day. Should I continue? <laughs> Rollers are good at roll, roll, rolling, pressing hot, sticky tar, smoothing and spreading, flattening the new road and slowly rolling, they can work all day. Bulldozers are good at push, push, pushing, over rough, bumpy ground, scraping and shoving, caterpillar tracks are grip, grip, gripping, they can work all day. Lorries. Lorries are good at long distance travelling, long ones, tall ones, different loads carrying, hooting their horns, beep beep, the big wheels turning, they can work all day. Right, and then that's the last page now, and it's night time, and all the vehicles are sleeping, and so at this point, I usually, I usually sing it in a really, really quiet voice, and I go like, what a busy day, now it's time for resting. Brakes on, engines off, the sun is setting. No beep beeping, no vroom vrooming. Shh, they can rest all night. The end. And oh my goodness, like my girls love it and it's not just my girls like when i was a kinder teacher preschool teacher my my boys girls like they everyone just love books right and when you make books like that fun you know you vary your tone of voice you make it like you know musical rhythmic and things like that right repetitive like they feel like they can join in they feel like they they know the words they know what's coming up next they can predict what's coming up next and prediction is also a literacy skill a pre-literacy skill as well the ability to predict what's coming up next right it's just so fun i mean how can you not find it fun, right? All right, cool. So that's one book. All right, let me just see um, if you guys got any comments. Can't believe how much I learn every time I'm listening to your live session and also your passion to grow children's curiosity. Thank you for your generosity. Oh, you're most welcome. You're most welcome, Gillian. I've been making songs out of books too. It's so fun. How do you decide what tunes to use for the text? I don't know. I just create my own tunes and sometimes when I'm just looking at it, right? All right, to be to to be in all honesty, I have musical background as well. I've learned I I I was a I was a pianist for like 20 years and so I do have some musical background as well. But you know, even if I didn't have any musical backgrounds, right? And sometimes, right, it doesn't have to actually be a familiar tune as well. Like actually, let me know. Does anyone of you even know this tune in the first place, the tune that I just sang, like, 
I actually don't even know where the original tune from but when I saw this book I just felt like that tune that I sang would really work really well with this book but sometimes right um, with other books as well right sometimes it doesn't work um, a, a tune that I, I know of it might not work for instance but it's okay I just create my own it doesn't matter all right and and the thing is with tunes right it doesn't have to just be for books right we incorporate um, songs we incorporate music we incorporate singing in almost every part of our lives brushing teeth and everything like that like like my husband is the is the king of um um creating jingles he 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 loves he he he's really proud of himself for coming out of jingles that 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 we can't get out of our head like my girls will just sing some brushing teeth song um you're brushing your teeth is so much fun like my husband is um amazing at that and my girls will sing that all the time right and just incorporating all these like musical elements right rhythmic elements repetitive things in a part of our day right it just helps our children to absorb things much quicker than if it's just just speaking for instance because music has a way of just uh, music and rhythm has has a way of helping um, things that are really hard to remember become easy to remember for instance you know like um, you know um, bingo song for instance b-i-n-g-o right you know there are there are so many um, things that I used to do with my kinders where I would swap out b-i-n-g-o you know that's a dog right and I would swap out b-i-n-g-o for my my children's names right for those of them with names that um, um, just to to um, help them to learn the letters of their name, for instance, right? Like, my daughter's name is um, Sarah, and she's got five letters in the name, and I'll go like S-A-R-A-H, you know, and things like that when they were much younger. And they would remember how to spell their names really, really easily because of songs like that, because of musical elements like that. Because, um, yeah, you know, when, when you're singing, for instance, right, there's just um, something amazing about songs and rhythm to help you with your memory, your ability to remember huge chunks of, of words, for instance, and huge chunks of, you know, um, facts and information and whatever else that you've got. All right. One little, two little, three little Indians. Yes, that's right. I didn't even, you know, it's so funny. Like for the longest time, I tried to, re to, to try to recall what tune am I singing this for from, right? And I cannot for the life of me remember, but I just knew this tune in my head would work really well with this book. And, and, and like, now I'm just so glad. Yes, finally someone has remembered and told me. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I think it's been like a few years and I cannot remember where this song is from and I just I just knew this tune and I couldn't um figure out um where this song was but yes, now I'm so happy to finally have the answer to my own question. Anyway. All right. Um All right, cool. Someone said I missed the 3 Rs. What are they? Rhyme, rhythm, repetition. Oh, yes, Cynthia has responded to you. Yes, I will. I will put it in my IGTV. All right, I'll try my best. Um, oh, actually, I might not be able to put it in my IGTV because my phone has no more space. My phone has no more space. I'm so sorry, guys. It might just be available to watch um, replay in the next 24 hours. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I meant to delete more stuff on my phone every time I go on a live, but I always forget and like, yeah, my phone was just reminding me earlier that I forgot. Anyway, um, so um, someone, the other day, I put up a short clip of my, my baby reading, actually my, not my baby, she's 18 months, my 18-month-old reading reading um, this book here. And so I thought I'll show you this book as well, which is um, one of the top 10 books that I would always tell, you know, someone, with, someone who asked me, you know, um, for a baby or for a toddler, you know, if I want to start collecting books, right? What are some books that I would uh, recommend, right? This would be in my top 10. Chica Chica Boom Boom is one. This is another one. Um, 10 Little Fingers and 10 Little Toes. All right. And so I had a quick... Um, um, quick sneak peek or I think it was only about a minute um, long on my Instagram the other day and it was just in my stories and so I thought I'll just show this here because a lot of you actually I thought this book a lot of you guys would know but actually there was hundreds of you who actually say you didn't know what this book is and so here it is 10 little fingers and 10 little toes it's a beautiful beautiful book for reading with um, babies and and you know this was a great book right for my 
toddlers from my older children because they were so familiar with it as well right like I said uh, rhythm rhyming and things like that repetition right it was such a great book for my children to actually my older kids to actually read it to their youngest sister when she was born right I always advocate right if you see one of my videos about um siblings right if you've got siblings to actually um yeah to actually um read um get your older children involved right to reading singing with your children you don't have to be doing all the thing all the time right but if you are able to have books right where they are so familiar and so well loved right that your older siblings actually your older children actually know the entire book for instance get them to read it to your youngest your baby newborn and then sit down and have a cup of coffee guys all right so this was a book that my older girls would always be reading to my youngest when she was like a little little like newborn all right so i'm just going to read this one now as well 10 little fingers and 10 little toes there was one little baby who was born far away and another who was born on the very next day and both of these babies as everyone knows had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes and so usually books like that right where it's repetitive over and over again what i'll do is i'll pause at the end of um the the sentence just before the very last word whether it's a rhyming word or whatever just to let my children join in as well to encourage them to be a part of it to participate as well because when children join in they 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 get they take ownership of the book as well they feel like it's their story as well and 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 it builds their confidence in reading as well because and they feel like, wow, I actually know the words. Wow, I can actually read, right? And confidence begets confidence. Like right? when they are confident um, with their reading once, right? They will be more confident to read it another time on a different occasion for a different book, right? And that's how confidence gets built with their reading, right? And then that comes to writing later on as well. Right? There was one little baby who was born in a town and another who was wrapped in an eider down, right? And so you see... Because, like I said earlier, with regards to rhyming, right, children will be exposed to language that would that will that they would otherwise not be exposed to if it's not for the fact that it's rhyming, right? Like for instance, why would anyone call this an eider down, right? Like most people will call it like what a comforter, a blanket, and things like that. But because they wanted to choose a word that would rhyme with the word town, and so children are suddenly exposed to the word eider down, right? And so, like, you might have seen me in the story, right? Like, my uh, my 18-month-old, she knows that this is a blanket. And she kept telling me, blanket, blanket, right? And then I was telling her, yes, it is a blanket. But the word here says, either down. And either down also means blanket, right? And so, my 18-month-old my might not understand. It's fine, right? It doesn't matter that she doesn't understand. But my, my other two children are there listening as well. And they could understand. They could be picking up new language, new words and all that as well. And they realize that, you know, with one meaning, for instance, there can be lots of different ways to say um, a, one word, for instance. And like now, um, my, my girls are very into... Um, all the feelings books for instance and so you know when we're talking about happy joyful and things like that they will ask me like what's the meaning of this word what's the meaning of this word for instance right and i will tell them like all right it's the same word as happy happy is the same as joy um joy is the same as um 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 can't even remember now but that there was quite a few right and then we ex we expose our children to synonyms right to show them how that there can be so many words that actually mean the same thing right and that helps to build their ex and expand their vocabulary which will later help them when they become um storytellers and then later on story writers all right and both of these babies as everyone knows had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes there was one little baby who was born in the hills and another who suffered from sneezes and chills. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. Sorry, I'm just reading in such a, such a teacher voice. And somehow I always read in a very sing-song voice as well, I realise. There was one little baby who was born on the ice and another in the tent who was just as nice. And both of these babies, as everyone knows, 
had 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. But the next baby born was truly divine. A sweet little child who was mine, all mine. And this little baby, as everyone knows, has 10 little fingers, 10 little toes, and three little kisses on the tip of its nose. And you know, when, when you're reading it to like a baby, like a newborn for instance, right? And you're wondering like, oh, you know, how do I engage with my baby and things like that, right? You know, things like when you're reading books like that, right? You know, 10 little fingers and I'll be playing with my girl's fingers as babies, right? I will be like, you know, helping them to make that link between words that I'm saying, words that I'm reading to, to their body parts and things like that. They might not get it as a newborn, but as you do it repetitively over and over and over again, they actually learn to realize, you know, things like that, like, oh, fingers, you know, like my girls, they learn, they learn body parts and things like that just from reading books, right? And then they learn like, you know, toes, you know, nose, you know, kisses on the nose, right? And then when I read about the, the, the page where, you know, we have kisses on our nose and then I will lean in, I'll kiss my, my, my girls on their nose like three times, one, two, three, right? And things like that. It's again, um, authentic learning, like, you know, just counting as part of the, the book, right? And so like, um, some of you might have seen that my uh, when I was putting up that, that little clip of my 18-month-old reading the book with me, this book, right? And she was, at the end of it, she was attempting to kiss me on um, on the nose. And she kissed three times, right? As an 18-month-old, she could actually remember that, you know, we need to do this three times, right? And so she kissed me three times on the, on the nose um, when we were reading the story, which was just like so amazing, right? And, you know, as a newborn, we're doing for babies as well. That is bonding as well, you know, that love and that connection with your children. All right? <sighs> All right. Do you teach your children Chinese? Um... I don't, I don't, um, yeah, that's, that's another, that's another question for another day, but in, in short, um, we have Chinese books, and I will read to my Chinese, I will read the Chinese books with my, with my girls, and, um, if they ask, right, and sometimes I might choose it, and I will read it to them as well, but I don't specifically teach them, um, the, the language, only because, um, I, I'm with them all the time and you know so much time right not even at daycare and things like that and so 24-7 they're with me right and I have to do so many things like you know that that whole um, teaching in terms of you know discipline and things like that and I feel like I cannot do that in Chinese and so yeah but that's my that's my choice uh, feel free to DM me I'm happy to talk to you about that privately all right <laughs> do you point to each word when you read to your girls um it depends all right yes I do that um, sometimes now because now my older girls are in a very my three and four uh, sorry three and four yes my three and four year old are in a very sensitive um, phase of sensitive period for for um, reading and writing right and so I really want to help them to make the connection between the things that I say the things that I read words on the page as well as um, yeah words on the page and what I say and so as I read I will be pointing out words as well. And sometimes, because now my four-year-old in particular, she's able to actually decode some, some words as well just by sounding out as well. And so sometimes I will emphasize certain um, words, emphasize certain letters as well. And so I will point to her. Right, but obviously with my like eighteen month old, no, I'm not going to be pointing every, 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 um, every word as well. It's just it just takes too much time. And because for me, I want to focus on my children's um, interests, right? And so with my 18-month-old now, for instance, as she's reading books, her interest now is not in words, obviously. Her interest now is in pointing out pictures in the book that she can recognize, right? And so that is what we'll be focusing on. I always advocate following and extending on your children's interests. Go with their lead. Let them lead the way and just be there to, you know, respond, be responsive to what they are um. They are showing you that they want to do more of, right? Like my 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 eighty month old, when I was reading this book to her, for instance, she wanted to point to you know the fingers, the toes, and then she wanted to point to the blanket, you know, and then um she was pointing to I think there was one page where there was a penguin as well. Like she was very excited because she knows um what's a penguin. She wanted to point to the penguin and things like that, right? So obviously with an eighteen month old. I will, I'm not going to be pointing the words because it's not what she, it's not meaningful to her yet. Um, 
And so I want to actually focus on her interests and, and follow on her on, um, on what she's showing me that she wants to, to um, explore more of. And so we will be talking about the pictures more instead. With my older girls, even though they're in a sensitive period of development, for instance, right, I don't do it with every single book that they are actually, uh, that we are actually reading together now, for instance, like, um, because some books are just too long. And, and the, the, re the reason with um, pointing words, right, is because you want to help them to, you know, um, get, draw their attention to the words you say and the, and the words on the page, right? But that is only meaningful if they have already read the book several times enough to actually even know the books, the, know the words of the book, right? Because if they don't know the words as at, at that point, right? If it's a new book, for instance, it doesn't really make sense and th there's not much purpose in just pointing out the words. Oops! If there's, no, there's not much purpose in pointing out the words on the page at that point, right? And so it really depends on the situation and I would say, like, go with your children. Like, they will... If you are able to follow their lead, right, you will know when you should be pointing to the words in the book and when you should just enjoy that process of reading, enjoy that process of, you know, just bonding with our children um reading on, on the book you know sometimes we don't even get to reading the book like my children just spend so much time if you look at my insta story today i shared about a cover page of a book that my children are constantly loving now but today in particular we didn't even read the book but we spent so much time just talking about the cover page because there was just so much print stuff that my children were just eager to explore more just on the cover page alone and so i would say follow your child's lead all right um, okay. Um, do I teach my girls phonics? No, I don't. But having said that, my girls now have recognized that, that, that letters have sounds. And so, yeah, that's how we're going, right? And so they are, they are able to, and it's all through reading, just by reading. Because, you know, things like um, with rhyming words, for instance, right? Sometimes as we're reading, I'll be pointing out to them words in the book, like it's reading. And I'll tell them like, oh, you know, this book, like just now, uh, what was, uh, let me see, dig, uh, digging, for instance, right? Like I said, crash, right? Just now I was, I was sharing this word, for instance, crash. And I would say like crash, right? See, look at this one. It says cr you know and things like that like sometimes because they will recognize the letters in their name as well and like because my my second born her her name starts with the letter c and so sometimes when she looks at she sees word that has the letter c in it she gets really excited and then we'll talk about those words um more in depth right and things like that and then we'll say this is what is crash right because it sounds like your name right it has the cat sound c -c crash right and when we're just talking about this naturally through reading for instance right that's how my children actually all learn the the sounds of the letters right and so i didn't i didn't teach my children anything specifically like you would have known i i if you follow me for a while i always talk about how i've never taught my children the abcs specifically like explicitly i've never taught them phonics and things like that but they have just picked up things like that just through reading like I, i've said before they learned that abc from this book and um they learn sounds through just different books that we read with um with sounds in it all right um let me see what about encyclopedia do you recommend encyclopedia um Non-fiction books, do you mean that? Um, I don't have any encyclopedias. I knew I grew up with encyclopedias, but I don't have them anymore. But what we do have is we have a lot of non-fiction books and we read non-fiction books all the time. And so I believe in exposing our children to a wide variety of texts. And so it's not just um, picture books, but it's also, you know, we read catalogs as well. Like sometimes, um, you know, just going through the, the weekly shop, right? I'll look through catalogs and I'll look through the catalogs with my girls. And then we talk about, you know, what's on special what can we buy what do we need to add to our grocery list you know and then we talk about how uh, mommy we can only buy things on special that is half price and so they look out for those um half price those signs and things like that and so that's how all that learning comes so naturally because we we expose our children to all kinds of text and not just picture books and so we've got like non-fiction books as well where my children, because depending on their interests, like now currently my four-year-old is just in the phase where she's asking a lot of questions, why, 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 and currently a big interest in body. And so we, we do read a lot of um, non-fiction books with regards to body, for instance. All right. Um, can you share the title to the book you read earlier? Um, I was reading um, Dig, Dig, Digging, um, which is um, a great book on um, different vehicles, um, transportation vehicles. 
dig dig digging and the other one was um 10 little fingers and 10 little toes all right um what's the time now 10 22 all right i might just read one last one and then we might do this again another time all right because i don't want to hold you guys for too long um do you find your books by browsing online um, not really actually. I guess because I was a kinder teacher and we used to always be talking about books all the time even as um, like I mean as um, part of my training like we had to do um, programs and um, courses and um, uh, modules on literacy and things like that and so we'll be discussing with our classmates and teachers about you know different books and the value behind different books and things like that and even as a kinder teacher I will always be you know talking to my other colleagues and and just everyone in the field and yeah just in general you and then I'll, I will look online as well but in terms of online I will look on um, I guess like teacher Facebook groups and things like that and um, yeah that's how we and then like now Instagram and Pinterest and all as well just a quick Google right you'll be find you'll be finding like so many um, information and books out there like top 10 books you know for literacy top 10 books for all kinds of um, different interests as well right so we are just living in such an amazing time and such a privileged time where information is so easy for us to get when you read to them, do you need to do they need to face you? No. Children love to that come that closeness and so a lot of times they are just sitting on my lap. And so um yeah, they are just sitting on my lap. Imagine this is my child and then we are just um we're just reading the book together like that. And so she sees what I see. And so yeah, because of that that physical touch, that closeness, and then she looks at the page together. Sometimes um they would sit next to me and so yeah it's usually just very um together <laughs> all right um what would be your top eight books for a six month old baby um i've actually got a list of that um i will share that i will share that um in my instagram another time all right do you recommend wordless books yes yes i do um yeah they're so good at uh for for just talking about the pictures right and encouraging children to describe what they can see do you have uh what about flip books would you recommend them yes yes all kinds like that's why i said i would recommend to introduce your children to all kinds a wide variety of different texts right like you know and and with regards to because Flo, I know you have um a baby, right? With regards to babies, for instance, right? The value of having um books like you know touch books, sensory books, and flip books and things like that is it helps children to actually join in the process of reading as well. Because at such a young age, right, they are not inclined to actually be able to focus so long unless it is unless it is rhythmic and they feel like they can join in, they are engaged in it. Because if it's just you just reading, for instance, right, there are some kids, right, I'm not saying it doesn't work at all because children are all so different. There is no one set way that it will work for one child. But, you know, I always talk about this story of how my firstborn, she never, never enjoyed sitting with me to read books. And as a teacher, I was like, oh my goodness, my child doesn't like reading, right? And I realised later on that it's not that she doesn't like reading, but it's just that she likes to... She likes the audio aspect of reading and she likes to keep her hands busy whilst um, um, getting books read to her, right? And so she doesn't like to sit down with me on my lap and read books after books and look at pages and look at pictures and, and talk about the pictures and pages and things like that. But she wanted me to read to her still, right? And so my, with my first one, she would be just playing and I'll be just reading aloud next to her. And she will remember books like that, just like that, without even looking at the pages, but just audio, just auditory. And, and that's the power of repetition and rhythm and um, rhyming. Because even without looking at the pages on the book, even without um, looking at the pictures on the book, she was able to recite the entire book from cover to cover at a really, really young age, even though she was not sitting with me and reading. And at, at that point, because I before we actually got to the point where I could see her memorizing those stories, right? I used to be like, oh my goodness, she that she's not enjoying reading. Like, how am I going to get her to enjoy reading and things like that? And that's why now I am such um, a huge, I guess, advocate for this following your child thing because it's really up to the individual child, right? 
my my children are all so different i cannot parent them the exact same way right like my second born my third born they love that whole cuddly um no personal uh, space at all kind of um, reading time with mom and they can actually sit here and flip books sit with me for an hour if i was happy to sit there with them for an hour they will be happy to sit there with me for an hour and read books for an hour and that would never have happened with my first born right it was nothing that i do or didn't do but it's just that children are all so different and that's why we need to be following our children all right do you have specific times you read to your children or at any time any time any time all right cool i'm just going to read one last book and i think that's it actually i prepared like i think five or six but um yeah it's getting late <laughs> All right, this is another one because I wanted to talk about this author in particular. Julia Donison is um is a genius. She is amazing. I have like so many, so many, so many of her books. Let me know in the comments if if you guys know of Julia Donison. Right, she is like amazing. She's a genius. I'm just gonna repeat that over and over again, but. All of her books, right, encom encompasses so much of the rhythm, the rhyme, and the repetition. All right, so um, yeah, all her books are brilliant, and so I just chose one, and I actually just chose the the one that is probably one of the shortest one because some of her books are quite long. But the thing is, even though they are long, my children are always so engaged because of yeah, just just listen and you will understand why. All right, so the author again, I would say, is Julia Donaldson. And this book is called A Squash and a Squeeze. But honestly, any of her books, you'll be fine. Like, honestly. Okay. So. A little old lady lived all by herself with a table and chairs and a jug on the shelf. A wise old man heard her grumble and growls. There's not enough room in my house. Wise old man, won't you help me please? My house is a squash and a squeeze. Take in your hen, said the wise old man. Take in my hen? What a curious plan. Well, the hen laid an egg on the fireside rug and flapped around the room, knocking over the jug. The little old lady cried, what shall I do? It was pokey for one and it's tiny for two. My nose has to tickle and there's no room to sneeze. My house is a squash and a squeeze. Wise old man, won't you help me please? My house is a squash and a squeeze. Take in your goat, said the wise old man. Take in my goat, what a curious plan. Well, the goat chewed the curtains and trod on the egg, then sat down to nibble the table leg. The little old lady cried, Glory be! It was tiny for two and it's titchy for three. The hen pecks the goat and the goat's got fleas. My house is a squash and a squeeze. And she said, Wise old man, won't you help me please? My house is a squash and a squeeze. Take in your pig, said the wise old man. Take in my pig, what a curious plan. So she took in her pig who kept chasing the hen and raiding the larder again and again. The little old lady cried, Stop, I implore. It was titchy for three and it's teeny for four. Even the pig in the ladder agrees. My house is a squash and a squeeze. Wise old man, won't you help me please? My house is a squash and a squeeze. Take in your cow, said the wise old man. Take in my cow? What a curious plan. Well, the cow took one look and charged straight at the pig then jumped on the table and tapped out a jig. The little old lady cried, Heaven's alive! It was teeny for four and it's weeny for five. I'm tearing my hair, I'm down on my knees. My house is a squash and a squeeze. Wise old man, won't you help me please? My house is a... And then my kids will say, a squash and a squeeze. Take them all out, said the wise old man. But then I'll be back where I first began. So she opened the window and out flew the hen. That's better. At last I can sneeze again. She shooed out the goat and she shoved out the pig. My house is beginning to feel pretty big. She huffed and she puffed and she pushed out the cow. Just look at my house. It's enormous now. 
Thank you, old man, for the work you have done. It was weenie for five, it's gigantic for one. There's no need to grumble, there's no need to grouse, there's plenty of room in my house. And now she's full of frolics and fiddle dee dees. It isn't a squash and it isn't a squeeze. The end. All right. And so, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, let me see any last questions. If the kids start to wander off halfway through a book, read Polaroid, or want to start on another book halfway through, what do we do? I will, I will finish the book. And I guess it really depends on the children again. Depends on their age, right? Like if um, a 13-month-old, for instance, were to just hop off and go, right? I'm not going to sit there and, you know, ask her to come back because I know my children and I know that at 13 months, they are not meant to be able to sit that long. And that's fine, right? And if I'm happy to let my child go and continue reading, I would do that. So sometimes, even if my child goes off, I will still continue reading aloud as well. All right. Oh my goodness, I have three seconds. I gotta go. Bye.